ladies and gentlemen. I am absolutely delighted to join you again this year for the symposium on the future network car. I really thank the ITU and the UNEC for continuing to bring attention to this important topic. We have been discussing about the future network car for many years now, and the long-standing vision of self-driving vehicles, seamless, automated, connected mobility, which we have yet to see in wide-scale practice. Some skeptics of these efforts have argued that connected automated vehicles are just a solution looking for a problem. What significant value do they bring to the market and how will they address our existing problems? It has been a disruptive year for the mobility world, as we all know. The movement on our roads dropped by around 30% in many cities around the world. There have been huge changes in mobility patterns and demands. As COVID-19, given the connected automated vehicle industry a renewed resonance, the opportunity to contribute to building a new mobility ecosystem, in terms of its role to address the new mobility demands and to regain consumer trust, I would say yes. In terms of solving the global road safety challenge, I have yet to be convinced. Due to rising COVID-19 health concerns and changing commuting patterns, demand among private consumers for personal cars is increasing and share rides seems to be out. Change in shopping habits with a greater focus on e-commerce are shifting the landscape for both retail and logistics. And it is driving demand for logistics and de delivery services. A European market research firm reported that 54% of survey respondents indicated they plan to increase online spending permanently, while 28% percent plan to durably reduce visits to physical stores. Companies will have to quickly increase their operating capacity to meet demand. Autonomous vehicles could be an attractive option to fill these gaps. They could help to increase delivery network capacity, reduce costs, and comply with social distancing measures. The booming e-commerce sales resulting surge in investments and greater involvement from logistic companies could speed up delivery of autonomous commercial vehicles. Investments in flows from logistic companies could help automotive manufacturers unlock more resources for new technologies. It could finally pave the way for a mass rollout of connected automated vehicles in filling both the personal and commercial demands. The likelihood that we may face similar global pandemics in future gives presidents to prepare for an increased role of connected automated vehicles. Using data from the COVID-19 experience will help us understand where the industry could play a stronger role. Where did transport workers suffer the greatest risk exposure? Which communities experienced food or grocery shortages? Where were essential worker transportation compromised? Where did vital medical supply chains break down? How do we provide mobility services that address the fears of contamination among mobility users and potentially data increase in private car ownership? We should determine how we might develop flexible connected and automated vehicle services that could address this and other challenges. This could be the basis for further development, regulation, and rollout that we have been long waiting for. While the progress of development to date has been rapid, AV technologies remain largely unproven for many operators. Regulatory initiatives vary significantly from hands off guidance with no formal permitting program to structured performance evaluations. Moreover, most policies that exist today are only temporary measures to enable testing. Therefore, it is essential that policymakers engage with the industry, 
creating a shared framework for deployment and with users to get feedback on acceptability of the system. I've always argued that automated connected vehicles are far from being the solution to the communities that are most affected by road traffic crashes. The infrastructures in many countries will not support automated vehicles for the near future. The cost of the technology is still very high. In 2021, we are starting a second UN decade of action for road safety with an extended target to half the number of road deaths and injuries and to provide access to safe, affordable, accessible, and sustainable transport systems for all by 2030. We must be striving to reduce the road safety divide between developed and developing countries. We observe that some regions of the world, such as Africa and the ASEAN region, are relying more and more on the work of UNICE WP29 for updating their regulations and standards related to automotive productive product safety. We also have the United Nations Road Safety Fund that is supporting work in all the regions of the world, and all that are great news. However, COVID-19 has changed our projected advancements in our respective sectors and highlighted the opportunity to harness new technology. Organizations like ITU and UNEC should take advantage of this changing landscape and promote life-saving vehicle technology to those who need it most. I wish you a great meeting. And again, I'm very happy to be with you today. Thank you.